Hello, welcome back to another video and actually welcome to a new series that you guys have suggested, which is going to be my CC masterclass. So a lot of you guys often ask about the CC that I use on my Sims and I've always wanted to do a video where I focus and just show you guys all the CC that I use and name all the CC so that you guys can find it and use it as well. But I never got time to get around to it. But today I do. And we're going to be kicking things off in today's episode with a focus on CC for skin. So I'm planning on doing CC for skin, for makeup, for eyes, for hair and cover off everything that you guys want. If there's anything specifically you're after, please let me know in the comments below. But today we're going to be focusing on the skin of our Sims. So if you're new to this channel and you're wondering like why, why are people interested in making their Sims look like yours? I kind of have a CC style, I guess, that I think some people really, really like. And my Sims kind of tend to go from looking like this, which was a makeover we did of Lilith Pleasant to something like this. So this is kind of the aesthetic that I like for Sims. Everyone is different. Everyone's like chosen path for how they want to make their Sims look is totally fine. It's your own game. I encourage you to play it the way that you guys want it to. And I play it the way that I want to as well. And this is kind of the look I like for my Sims. So I have a lot of CC, like so much CC. And I'm going to try and go through as much of the skin stuff as I can today. So these are two randomly like generated Sims that just kind of came with Cass when I opened it. And I've just kind of stripped everything off. And we're going to use them each time we film an episode in this series just to kind of build them up over time and show you guys all of the CC that we have. So this is our male Sim right here. He's called Sol Corey. Sol Corey, there we go. And our female Sim is called Lara Miles. So there we go again. And I've actually gone ahead and replicated them both twice because I need a toddler version of each of them. And I need a child version of them too. Just because the CC that's available for all of them is slightly different. And some CC that you can get for adults, you can't get for children and toddlers and vice versa. So there are all versions of them. And before we get into actually the skin details, it is worth me just kind of pointing out a few things that I've learned about skin as I've been making sims because the way I've made sims has changed. I am by no means an expert. I don't think I make the most amazing sims at all, but I've still learned a few things over time that I thought I would at least share with you guys. So when I first started making sims, I used completely custom skin tones and you can still see they all still exist in my game here. However, since the update to the skin tones, not only are they way more skin tones than they ever were before, but you can also choose like, you know, the lightness and brightness of individual skin tones. And what you basically have ended up with is just way more skin tones than there ever were. Now, I still do really like the custom skin tones that I had been using before. There's absolutely nothing wrong with custom skin tones, and I think that they can look really good. However, I have just found that the custom skin tones don't work well when it comes to genetics. So I've had children where I've been using custom skin tones for both of their parents and then the child has ended up like a completely different skin tone. So in my game now, I do just tend to use the in-game skin tones instead so that my children will end up with the same skin tones as their parents or like a mix of both the skin tones. I still don't think Sims gets that quite right, but it definitely gets it a lot better than using custom skin tones because there are no genetic features with them. The other thing that I've learned as I've made Sims is I always just assumed when I was changing these kind of like if I went for this one or this one it wouldn't really like matter too much because I could still bend it and twist it to the same way as its original cheek and this kind of works for all different parts of the skin but that isn't the case at all doing changes to the cheeks and the jawline and all of that kind of thing really drastically changes what you will be allowed to do within the framework of what you have picked so what I mean by that is when I change these it is kind of changing the parameters of how much I can change a face so this face I will never be able to get the same flatness or like this cheekbone shape and these bones here are like specific to this. And this one will always have like a wider face. This will always have a deeper face here and here. And these are very much, this is a broader, wider face as well. I can obviously go into detail mode and like change stuff around a little bit, but I'm changing it within the new parameters of the face that I've picked. So what that basically means is one, this has way more kind of weight than I originally thought that it did. And two, if you choose different like uh, versions of each part of the face, you will end up with like significantly more different sims. So if you want more variation, I suggest trying a few different ones of these before you go and tweak it yourself. And this also will impact how the skin details lay on top too. So for example, with the lips, if you look at like the skin around the lips, as I change the lips, that's changed the cheek. So if I go in between these two, you can see the, the like shadow on the cheek change. And that is true of all lips. Again, massive change between this one and this one. And when the skin details lay on top, that's going to change things again. So I would just say skin details are great and I definitely use them to cover up, um, 
you know, I know that I can lay them on top and all my Sims will look good, but it's still important to kind of work on this under level too, because I'm changing all of the little tiny genetic points of a face and it will impact how each skin detail lays on top. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the actual skin details. So as I said, I have a lot. This is probably compared to some people's collection, very big. Compared to other people's collections, it is very small. It is just the ones I've ended up with and I'm always on the hunt out for more, but I kind of have started to develop preferences on ones that I like to use. And I would say there's a lot in here that I either don't use anymore. They, I got them when I very first, I did my very first skin details I ever downloaded, or they are just ones that I only use very, very occasionally. And then I've got some favorites that I use very, very often. So the most important thing in the whole of this for me is actually these little fellas right here. So these kind of list what each of these skin details are lying on. So all of the skin details in this section. So for example, this or this nose mask or this toddler overlay are all sitting on mouth crease and different skin details are going to sit within different categories. Now, without these kind of separators here, I could, for example, apply like these eyelashes here and be like, oh, great, I've put I've put some eyelashes on my sim. And then I could click this, which is another overlay and kind of be confused as to where have the eyelashes gone. It's because they both are sitting within the same category, but without the dividers, it's really, really hard to tell that. So these are the dividers that I use. It is the tidy details and tidy tattoo by Sparrows CC, and it's going to list what is within each category. And as the uh, title suggests, it also does it for tattoos as well. I cannot tell you how handy this is and the number of times I accidentally took CC off another layer without realizing until the end. And I was confused as why my sim didn't look the way I wanted it to look. So this is an absolute must have before you download anything else download this first. And I will drop a link to this in the description below. There's probably going to be a lot of stuff and I don't know where all of it is. So I'm going to be saying the names for most things, but I will be dropping the link for this in the description below. A lot of you guys also know that I used to upload all of my CC in a downloadable folder when I first started making Sims content. However, I've since learned that most CC creators do not like, they kind of forbid you from re-uploading their CC, which is fair enough. They've worked on it. I also actually pay for some CC now through Patreon as well. So I can't upload my CC folder anymore. That is the reason. I no longer do it. But whenever I do CC shops, I do link everything in the description. So I would keep an eye out for those. So I kind of split my CC up into two categories. This is what I would call Muxus Match CC. It still keeps that cartoony feel of the game. And this is your kind of much more realistic alpha CC. Now, you don't have to pick one or the other. I have both of them here. I like both of them. So this I could, would say is more alpha. This is more max as much. Like both of them look good. Don't ever feel like you have to lock yourself into one. Most people do use a little bit of each. And what I found I really like doing is actually using alpha, uh, sorry, max as much CC and then adding some other details on top that are more alpha to end up with my more in between kind of look. So it's neither alpha, it's neither max as much. It's somewhere in between. I find that alpha can look a little bit stark in contrast to the rest of the game, but I just don't like the look of the clayness of max as much. So somewhere in between works for me. And let's go ahead and show you guys some of my favorite CC. So as you can see, I do have an awful lot. These two here are from S Club and I'm going to be kind of calling out some of the specific creators that I really, really like. However, I don't tend to use these ones a lot. This V one here, however, I do use an awful lot. So the actual name for my V skin is Papillon Skin and it's by VRV, which is where the V comes from. You probably will instantly can tell like by the way that those Sims look that I use this an awful lot. It's really nice and it does make a really big difference to your Sims. A lot of the more realistic skin, such as this one here and this one here are actually, oh, oh and this one here and also this one here. <laughs> are actually all by the same creator. And as you can probably tell by the listing there, they are by Obscurus. So I will drop a link to the Obscurus CC as well. It does tend to be mainly focusing on skin details. And as you can probably tell by these previews, it's focusing on hyper realism, hyper realistic looking Sims. So if that's what you're after, I would really recommend Obscurus. There is another one. And I feel like this is another one as well. And what a lot of skins do is you can see this, the shoulders are doing that because this skin in particular, this layer here is designed for female sims. Uh, there is also an option where you can add the eyebrows too. So you would have to take off these eyebrows completely. And some of the more realistic skins do do that. We'll be doing eyebrows with hair. So there we go. Super realistic looking eyebrows as well. And there is also a version for men, which basically just doesn't include the overlay on the body. Whereas the female one does have freckles. And here is it with the male eyebrows as well. And I actually think this skin 
maybe by another creator that I really recommend, which is Sims 3 Melancholic. So this is another one with a male and female version. And this one here, Polar, is another one. Now, I use these skins a lot when I first started making um, Sims. When I first downloaded CC and started applying it as skin details, the Sims 3 Melancholic ones here were really, really good. And I actually still use a lot of them for toddlers. Here is another one, Cezia. However, I don't find myself using these skins quite as much, but I do still really recommend them because they are pretty beautiful looking uh, CC. And they actually have collabed with Obscurus as well. So I'd say Sims 3 Melancholic and Sims 3 Obscurus have a similar kind of look, and it is that more hyper-realistic look. These eyebrows and these eyes, I'm literally looking at right now, and I'm like, I need them. Look at these eyebrows. This is the thing. I'm going to be helping you guys with CC whilst also totally just downloading a bunch of stuff myself. So one skin that I use an awful lot, you guys will probably know this one, is what I call the God Skin. And that is by Obscurus, who we mentioned before, and it is the N5 overlay. It has a bunch of variations. These skins not really singing right now with the uh, clay eyebrows. So I may just replace the eyebrows real quick so you guys can get a better idea. Because I find that realistic skin versus clay eyebrows is not the nicest combo. But yeah, this is the God Skin. There's four variations of it. This one is my favorite variation. I use this on a lot of Sims. It is a more realistic skin. You can see like the little hints of freckles there. This makes male Sims look great. It is only available for male sims. And I just think it's the nicest skin detail. And I use it all the time. It also gives really realistic lips as well. And it gives your sims body a much more realistic look too. So it's even like a little trace of hair there. Look at the arms. The arms just look so realistic. And some skin overlays will only do faces. But occasionally you'll find some that do body and... They just really bring your game to another level. So that is my favorite male skin overlay. That is Obscurus N5. And um, then I tend to get to this section here where I now have eyelashes, but I'm still in the same section. So this was forehead crease. And the next section is going to be mouth crease. So I have to decide at this point, do I want to use some skin details from this section? In which case, I'm going to probably apply eyelashes on this section. You can choose eyelashes as accessories, these Kijiko eyelashes, which give your Sims 3D eyelashes because you will probably notice that my sims do not have eyelashes. They do not have the in-game eyelash. I have the no EA eyelash mod, which I recommend if you want to start adding these eyelashes because you're not going to be able to see them if it has like the thick blocky eyelashes that comes with the sims. And this is just like way way more realistic eyelashes. This was like one of the first big changes I made to the way my sims look and I would never go back to the previous eyelashes now. So Kijiko eyelashes and no EA eyelashes mod are definite must have downloads. But because the eyelashes either sit on this section or they sit on this section, you've got to choose a skin detail from either here or here. You can't combine and do both because otherwise you won't be able to apply the eyelashes because they'll just immediately come off when you click something else from each area. So eyelashes from here, or eyelashes from here, skin details from the opposite section. Or you can choose to double up and apply them as accessories, but then you're, you are going to have to put them on from every single outfit, which personally kind of drives me mad. So some other nice skin details that I use here. This Gugu overlay is designed for toddlers, as you can probably tell, because it, it doubles up on the nipples. <laughs> if I'm kind of wanting to go for a little bit more of a Maxis Match feel, or I want to apply extra details later on, I really like the skin overlay. I like the smoothing that it does to the face, and I use it all the time with toddlers, but... I will often use it for children and for adults as well. So that's Goo Goo Overlay. So I do have some skin details as well that um, are only for the body and not for the head. So this one kind of changes the toning of your sim. I'm pretty sure this is from this creator right here. So I will drop you guys a link to that. Plum Bob and Fries. Yeah, PNF. Yep. The V skin actually appears on both sections. So you can kind of uh, choose to do either way with that, which is really handy. And the other creator that I absolutely love that you guys probably see me use all the time is Go Pulls Me. So Go Pulls Me is on Patreon. However, everything releases from Patreon after a certain amount of time. And I love, love, love so many of the things from this creator. I think it's probably the creator I use the most heavily. And I use it for faces, sorry, for skin details, for eyes, for eyebrows, and for makeup and lips and all of that kind of thing. So this is how the Go Pulls Me looks. There's a bunch of different variations depending on what kind of eyelid shape you want to use. And as you can probably guess from the thumbnails, I find that the Go Pulls Me is really good for Asian Sims because it has all of this variation here. And it just fits Asian Sim faces very, very well. However, I don't just use it on my Asian Sims. I use it on any Sim that I think will kind of fit the overlay. So this is the V1 overlay. And then this is a skin tone overlay as well. So this is kind of a full body one. And... 
that it's for women. It is a female specific one. So I probably wouldn't use it on my male sims, although I have by accident in the past because I really like the way it changes the way the face looks. As you can tell, skinny cells change the way your face looks so freaking much. So there's a few little strays floating around here, such as the SM Sims eyelid overlays, which I have used and i've sometimes just been like i'm gonna apply individual eyelashes as on every outfit just because i really really like eyelid overlays and these ones are fab and there is also this which if you watch me make sims i use this on almost every single sim now i don't actually use it in this section i use it further down on skin details but i just wanted to show you guys what it does because it adds like a bunch of pores and marks and just really the things that you see on regular human faces like we're not perfectly flat smooth faces we do have imperfections we do have like you know visible pores and all that kind of thing and i find that this gs overlay really helps with that so as with the go pause me i will link to this as well it is a blush to skin detail by uh kizma kisami Chisami. And there is a few different variations and it overlays really nicely on like all skin tones. So you'll always find one that works with a certain skin tone. So let's go ahead and choose some skin details from our first two sections here so that we can start applying all the rest and I can show you how they all kind of blend. I think I'm going to go for my favorite, the Obscurus N5, which looks really weird until you add custom eyes, but we will be covering that in a future episode. And let's add some eyelashes to him as well. With my male sims, if I'm using the Kijiko, the version 2 Kijikos, I like to use the one that's brown underneath and black on top just because it's a bit softer on male faces. And, you know, I just feel like it kind of suits the male face more. So we're now on to the next section, freckles, which you guys probably know I absolutely love because I really like putting freckles on my sims. So the Cerberus freckles here are ones that I use an awful lot. They are by Glossari and I'll link those in the description below as well. These are cool because they kind of go all over the body and they overlay nicely. They play nicely with other skin details. So my N5 is kind of going over, you know, overlaying his skin. And then these are sitting on top really nicely, which obviously I really like. There's a bunch of like different shades depending on what your sim skin tone is. And I do find that with this one, the Severus, uh, Severus one, Severus, the Severus um, overlay, that these freckles work well even on darker skin tones because I find that some freckles don't play very nicely with darker skin details. But as you can see, you can still see the freckles on this one, whereas some of the freckles can end up looking just way too light for a darker skin tone. So recommend the Cerberus ones. Cerberus. These ones, also the Hollow Springs ones, which I do usually love, don't unfortunately work on darker skin tones either. But on a lighter skin tone, I really, really do love these. I like like the randomness of them. I like that they're quite big freckles. And again, they also go on top of the body in like this kind of mole form too. So yeah, there's just a bunch of different ones to go for. My skin does this, so I kind of like that it's in there. So I do have some other random stuff hanging out in here as well, such as the This Is Them Joshua skin, which I don't think I've ever used because it's just a little bit too realistic for my taste. Or the Megan skin here by Sims 3 Melancholic, which I do like skins. You see these like little black bits here? That means that it's gonna, instead of like changing the skin overlay, like the skin color, it overlays on top of the skin, which I actually personally really like when they offer that option and, and a lot of places do now. And then this Pixis face kit, I really, really recommend if you like making tiny little changes, particularly if you are going for a Maxis match kind of look. So this is changing just like little bits about the way light is hitting the cheeks. Here, it's changing the way that the lips look. Little changes to the end of the nose there. So I have used this on Sims before. And if you are like really going for like a granular changes to a Sims appearance, the Pixis face overlay is so handy. There's a particular lip overlay that I really like. Like look at the, how it's changing here. I think that looks really cute. So if you're a perfectionist or if you just like really tiny things, this overlay kit, it appears on every single section, is so useful. So I will leave a link to that as well. And then we move on to the dimple section. So I have to use this for hairlines. This is a great one by Go Pulls Me. Another really good Go Pulls Me one. I also have a lot of these uh, skin, uh, sorry, hair lines from Darilia, which I tend to use if I'm making black sims and I kind of want to, you know, customize their edges a little bit. Otherwise, I will be using one of the Go Pulls Me ones. And for certain hairs, that I think have a less realistic front. These are absolute godsends. Like, I just think that they change the hair so much and you can end up with much more realistic hair. So I'll drop you guys a link to these Dorilla ones. But what I tend to most of the time use this section for is either adding these a immersion kind of cheek, deep cheeks for guy sims, just if I want them to have a bit more of a dramatic appearance, or 
what tends to happen for most of my sims is I like to give them a little tiny bit of blush. So this is the lightest one and it just gives a little bit of color to their face, particularly if I'm going for more of like a cute appearance. I find that this is really nice and it just stops my sims having like a really blank face, which is all the same color. There is three different versions. So for my darker skin sims, I will use the ones from this one, my lighter skin sims from this and the one in between and that is the bobo blush and i'll link you guys to that as well so now we move on to the dimple section i don't tend to use a bunch of stuff from here in some of my series i will be using these pupil overlays here which are again by pixis if you like supernatural stuff i recommend pixis very highly because there's a bunch of stuff that you'll be able to use from there some of the heterochromia kind of eyes sit on here as well so this one from averia and this is the glossy eyelid overlay as well which i used to use the glossy eyes you remember these eyes right here, but I don't tend to use them anymore. If I am using this section, it's probably going to be for this here, which is the Face and Light Pause by Fayish, which I've linked below. I don't use it quite as much anymore because I actually use a different pore overlay now, but I used to use this a lot. And again, it's just changing the shape of the face slightly too. Okay, now we're on the Lift More section. So there's a few skins that sit all the way down here. I don't know why they sit so low. There's one even further down than this, I think, in the boys section. But I wanted to show you guys the Arnold skin because... It is another really nice skin and I've used it a lot on Sims in the past. And as you can tell, it's slightly different, but similar vibes to the N5. It's another Obscurus one, so I'm just going to link you guys to it in case you want to use it. But the main reason I'll be using this section is either the Pixis face kit, these contour overlays from Go Pulse Me, which I just find for certain Sims really suit having like a little bit more of a contoured face. Or the GS pause, which is what I'm going to be adding today. So... These are the four colors. Here is, uh, sorry, five, six colors. And here is how it looks on top of another existing skin overlay. But I'm going to be popping the first one on. Am I? Or will I go for this one? I'm going to go for the lightest one, this white one here. And I just think that it immediately makes the skin look more like skin. I am kind of realizing I like a more realistic look than I thought maybe. <laughs> so the lip mole section has a few more hairlines that I might use. There's also a little no shine that I use on certain sims as well by Alexar. And Prawlene also has, if you're into storytelling, these like cuts and scratches that are pretty handy too. The next section, which I actually use heavily is cheek mole. And that is because it's where my nose overlays live. So my nose overlays, I really like adding nose overlays to Sims. I used to use this one a lot, which is like a, a little freckle one from Remersion. But nowadays I find that I'm almost always using the Obscurus N2 overlays. There are a bunch of different nose overlays here. As you can see, it does change the look and shape of the nose quite a bit. And depending on what nose you've gone for, it will probably change it even more. I find that this one right here tends to look really cute on younger sims. It kind of gives you a button nose, but it's not really suiting this guy's face. He's got a bit more of a stronger nose. So I just have a play and see which ones I think like suit the nose that I've given them the most. So I feel like this looks pretty good on that nose, maybe slightly darker, just a little bit more realistic looking. Actually, I'm going to go for this one. So the final section here is cheek mole, and I will use this for one of the three things. So there is another skin detail hanging out down here called Vincent, which is another Sims 4 melancholic. I don't know why it hangs out all the way down here, but it's another really nice skin tone. So I do tend to find that I use this one quite a lot too. And it also frees up those top two spaces for me. But what I tend to usually put on down here is either the proline mouth corners. I love mouth corners. I love it in real life when people have them. I just think they are so endearing and cute. So I give them to my Sims quite a lot. Or I use the Go Pulls Me Eyelid CC01. So I've used this heavily in my Not So Berry series. I tend to use it on the airs because it kind of gives them a bit of a similar vibe and you can kind of tell that they're all related. But the difference in the realism of the eyes, I just think is crazy. So like eyes before and then eyes after. They just look so real. Like they literally look like a picture of human eyes, especially if I'd applied like some really nice pupils there. His eyes would be absolutely looking so realistic right now. So I'm going to keep these eyelids on him because I just think they're really nice. And I highly recommend Go Pulse Me for all of these really awesome little bits and the eyelids. I'm desperate for some new eyelids to come out because otherwise I'm just going to keep using these on all of my sims. So we've got our male sim with all of his CC on. I'm just going to go ahead and put his eyebrows back on for next time. Wow, his actual <laughs> clay eyebrows look so weird now. And let's have a look at some of the stuff that's available for female sims that isn't available for male sims. And again, I'm just going to throw some more realistic eyebrows on just because it's going to help us out a bit. So as you can see, a bunch of the details that I have are identical for females and males. And they look really nice on each of them. There are a few ones on here that aren't on the male one, such as this Symbionts skin. 
which I love. This skin is amazing as well because it actually has a few body changes. So it adds like a soft belly and here it is without the soft belly and then with the soft belly. So it's just two variations based on which one you'd rather go for. It also has a version without freckles, a version with monolid with freckles and without and I like it a lot. I've used it a bunch recently. So I'll drop a link to you guys for that too. There's a few that are available for females with From Obscurus and Sims 4 Overlook, at uh, Sims 3 Melancholic that aren't available for men, such as these ones here. And then a few others for women as well. So Lychee for, uh, from Prawlene. And the one that we couldn't use on our male Sims, unless you wanted boobs, you can use on your female Sims like so. That is from Go Pulls Me. And this is how, the, I really like the Goo Goo, Goo Goo overlay. Again, you've got to go for this option if it's not a toddler otherwise you're gonna get an extra belly button and an extra set of nipples there but it does look really fresh and clear i like it a lot and i also have aside from the kajiko eyelashes these dream girl eyelashes which are pretty freaking huge they only appear on female sims and if you just want to go for something extra big they're looking like they're not quite meshing properly here but they do appear on accessories as well and i think they work a little bit better there i also have this megan skin from sims 3 melancholic which is really nice but i think since we went for a more alpha on our male sim let's go for v which is a super max as match skin for our female sim and i'll show you that you can still go for realism even if you do that so we'll pop some eyelashes on her and then we'll pop the little bit of blush that i mentioned before because i really like the way it colors the nose now i'm gonna apply that gs and instantly this face is looking a little bit more it's not quite alpha but it's a little bit more detailed we could add these pores from before as well just to give it even more detail, a bit more shading around the chin there. And then I'm again going to use the Obscurus nose overlay, but a little bit of a different one, one that I think will match her nose a little bit more. And just give her nose like a little bit more detail around this top bit here, because the alphas tend to, uh, sorry, the maxes match tends to flatten quite a lot. And then if I put those same eyelid overlays on, you can see that even though we've started off with a very uh, maxes match kind of face, we've ended up with something that looks a lot more realistic. And if you want to see what all of that looked like on the symbian skin, it looks like this, which I think is also really cute. In fact, I think I'm going to go for that because I like this little detail on the collarbone area too. So those are my skin details for um, adults. How about for toddlers? So I tend to like making super, super adorable toddlers. This is our same male sim, but just in toddler form. And I also have skin details here. The separators work here too. There's a little bit less selection, but honestly, there is still genuinely quite a lot. We've got that Pixar's face kit from before and the V skin too. No, this is the V skin. I don't know what this one is. When they don't label them, it makes it so difficult. Now, a lot of these alpha skins you can put on your baby sims too, if you want a more realistic baby. But what I tend to put on my babies is sometimes I use the Go Pulls Me. Sometimes I use Bebe Wonder by Sims 3 Melancholic, but often I'm going to be using Goo Goo Overlay just because I think it's very adorable and it layers really well. It plays nicely with other layers. I have Kajiko eyelashes for my toddlers as well. These ones here, like these are your standard ones. But I like these kind of like little sparse baby lashes. I think they're very cute. And then all of those freckles from before, the Cerberus freckles, the Remersion freckles, the Hollow Springs freckles are all there for children too. So those Darelia baby hairs from before also have some babies baby hairs as well. And I find these, again, are very useful if you want to add them to little kids' hair that maybe are a little bit too overly styled or they just don't have these little baby bits at the front. I find that very, very useful. Um, but I'm going to actually be using a little bit of that blush because babies tend to have right, quite red cheeks, particularly if they're teething, so it kind of works. There's also these little proline dimples if you want to add some little dimples on there too. There is also this 3K uh, face shine, which I will share with you guys. It doesn't play nicely with all skin details. So I don't know if you can tell, there's like a few little crosses on the skin now, but when you can get it to play nice, it does just look really lovely. There's a bunch of different uh, shades for it too. Unfortunately, it's not playing nicely with the freckles in this case, but I do really like it. I'll, I'll try it out on our um, little girl sim in a moment. And a bunch of this CC that I use is super compatible with babies. So we've got our noses, on there as well. I use that little no shine there. The eyelids unfortunately aren't for babies, but it's fine because we're going to use these little mouth corners for a happy baby instead. So that is all of the uh, skin details that I have for toddlers. A bunch of them you already know and I've linked from before. We'll use the V skin 
on Lara because uh, it's similar to what she looks like as an adult. And this is the face shine. So without it messing with the freckles, you can see it does just give babies that little baby glow. And yeah, once you start layering up the hair and the eyebrows and the eyes and stuff, you're going to end up with some very cute looking babies, trust me. And again, same story for children. We can use a bunch of the ones from when they were adults. There's no point showing teenagers because teenagers have access to all of the same stuff as adults do. But there is a separate Kajiko eyelashes for children. And I personally find that like kids in The Sims 4 are like, I don't know. I think they're a little bit odd looking. <laughs> I think the difference between toddlers and, and children is too extreme. So I really like using skin details on kids just to try and like, I don't know, soften their appearance out a little bit. But you can use the eyelids on the kids as well. So, oh my gosh, just instantly. Just looks so much better as soon as you put the eyelids on. It's just, those eyelids are literally god tier. God's here. You gotta download them. Literally, they are the best thing you'll ever download in your game. And here is the girl with all of her skin details on as well. I I need some more eyelids. Eyelids is like the one thing that I need to get some more of because I'm finding that I'm keep default into these just because the realism that it brings is actually just mind blowing. But all the same stuff on Lara as a child as well. So we've kind of been through everything in the skin details section. There are a few little skin details actually hiding out in some of the other sections so if i go to makeup i do have a few little eyelid overlays hanging out here so there's another uh, eyelid by go pause me called the g1 overlay here actually i'm gonna try them on her and i will take off her existing eyelids so i can show you them so there are the g ones really nice these are by obscurus the n9 overlays if you're looking for like a monolidded eyelid with an emphasis underneath the eye and then these ones are the n8s this also exists here my favorite eyelid just in case you wanted to use the mouth corners as well and my preference is is an eyelid that has this option. I don't really like color matching because I find it's very hard to get the exact right shade. And there's also these here, which are Sims 3 Melancholic Eyelids 2, which I think I gave to Asha. So you guys might recognize these eyelids if you have watched my main series. His eyelids naturally are quite similar to this, but that will radically change eyes for other Sims. And it's just like quite small eyelided, but quite like a masculine looking eye. So I recommend those as well. And these are how the N8s look on him. Instantly, I think they make him look drastically different. So eyelids important for sims but yeah that was all things skin details i think next time we will probably get into either eyes and makeup or eyebrows and hair so let me know which one of those you guys would prefer to see first i am going to drop links to almost everything that i've talked about today that i know of in the description below if there's anything that you think i've missed please just let me know in the comments i hope this was useful for you guys for kind of i know a lot of time i go through my skin details very quickly and you guys don't always catch the names or you can't find them online so hopefully it's going to be useful for um, finding the CC that you guys are after. And I'm looking forward to kind of building these Sims up as we add all of the different parts of the CC that we've going to go for on them. But hopefully the skin part has been useful for you guys. If it has, please show this video some love. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you can check out all of the other videos in this series. And if you want to see my Sims with their CC on, just doing their thing, please check out all the series that I have on my channel as well. We're currently doing the Not So Buried Challenge and it's very, very fun. And I will see you guys in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.